So, every year, EA drop a brand new promo at the start of the game that wants to watch promo. For cheap, fast and reliable FIFA 20 Ultimate Team coins, check out u7buy.com and use code HABER to get yourself 5% off all of your orders. This promo always consists of brand new transfer players from the transfer window just gone, currently just going. Obviously, the, the league has been pushed back and FIFA has been pushed back due to circumstances this year. So the transfer window is still going, which makes this kind of strange, but it's going to be the first FIFA where FIFA is released, I think, before the end of the transfer window, technically, if you get the early access editions, uh, which is really interesting. But every year, I like to make a video before the start of the new FIFA talking about the brand new ones to watch items we'll probably get, talking about brand new transfers, uh, possible transfers, and who we could get. Now, I just want to quickly say ratings are different in this video. I can't stress this enough. It's not a ratings prediction video. If you want to see those, subscribe to the second channel. Link in the description. I'm going to be doing those a bunch when I get back from Greece, where I am right now. Um, but these aren't rating predictions. I just get them different ratings because I think sometimes it's just fun to look at a different rating as opposed to looking at basically the same card with a new skin. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. We're starting off with number one, Nathan Ake. Obviously transferred from Bournemouth to Manchester City uh, probably around three or four weeks now. I think it was around £40 million. Pounds. I can't remember exactly the fee. Uh, I probably won't remember for most of these the fee, uh, but it wasn't a huge amount of money and it was a decent transfer for City. I remember Manchester United uh, looked apparently interested at one point and I was excited for that of it being a Man United fan and then City go and swoop in and take the transfer. But it's a good signing for them and a good move for Ake and I think he'll definitely get a once to watch item on starting the new FIFA. EA love to give Premier League items a new once to watch. Uh, EA love to give young players a once to watch. EA love to give defenders a once to watch as well because from EA standpoint, uh, these items obviously upgrade per inform. They are dynamic. So if, the, if Ake got an 82 base card and got an 84 inform, his once to watch would automatically upgrade to an 84 inform as well. Uh, so EA like to give players that maybe won't get informed sometimes, uh, wants to watch items. And we've seen in the past, players have got literal hat tricks and incredible games and not got informs when they have wants to watch items. It's been uh, a hilarious debacle to watch. So Ake wants to watch, I think definitely. Uh, we'll sort of see what he gets at the start of FIFA 21 as well. Next up, we have a transfer that was just announced yesterday for me. I am actually recording this on Sunday, the 6th of September. Uh, so for me, this was, I think, announced yesterday. Uh, but it's Allen to Everton. Fantastic signing, if you ask me. Uh, a really, really good player. I asked around and people thought that he deserved a downgrade from 85. I haven't I can't say I've watched enough of Allen to be able to tell, but from what I've watched, I watched a few Napoli games with the UCL. Look like a really good player. And also in FIFA, meta player, really good on the game. So I'm excited for this one to be in the Premier League. Gets a perfect link with the Charleston as well. So those teams at the start of FIFA 21, I guarantee there's going to be perfect links with the Charleston and, and Allen uh, to get that CDM and striker in there. And then it's going to branch off into a different league. But that's really cool. I like that about the start of the game. The new transfers always add new possibilities for hybrids. And Allen and Richarlison is definitely a really good, perfect link. But yeah, Alan to Everton, good signing. Following the Brazilian midfielder theme, we've got Arthur to uh, Piemonte Calcio, aka Juventus. Uh, there was basically a swap deal between Pjanic and Arthur. Pjanic going to Barca and Arthur going to Juventus. I don't want to say anything negative around uh, Pjanic. I don't think he's a bad player. But from my point of view, it feels like Juventus definitely got the better deal here. I don't know. Maybe Pjanic is a better player than Arthur. But to me, it seems like uh, Juventus got the better deal and Barca didn't. Very interesting. I'm pretty sure Arthur is a pretty recent-ish shining for Barca as well. So maybe they just didn't like him. Maybe he just didn't take to Barca very well. I don't know. But he uh, has gone one way and Pjanic has gone the other way. I've not included Pjanic in this video for the simple reason that I think he got a once to watch literally like two years ago for the Roma to Juve uh, transfer then. Um, and EA are likely to give wants to watch it again for other items, but I tried to do my best to keep items that I've already had a wants to watch out of this video. There may be some that pop up, but I've made a conscious effort to try and do that. But yeah, Arthur to uh, Juve would be good again for hybrid, you know, D uh, Douglas Costa and uh, Arthur getting the perfect link over there on that left side as well. Alexandro getting that perfect link. That's going to be really good for hybrids as well. And if he gets some decent informs or like an SBC card or something, he's going to be pretty valuable if you ask me. Now we have my favorite transfer so far. It is Donny van der Beek to Man United. I'm really excited to see how good he is. I've actually got him as my lock screen on my phone. I know it's a bit sad. I do apologize. 
But Van der Beek has gone from Ajax to Manchester United for a reported £35 million, which to me is a pretty good signing. It's one of those, I don't know how the midfield is going to rock up for May United next season, whether Oli's going to try and force Van der Beek into the squad, whether he's going to be a rotational player, whether it's going to be good squad depth, whether he's going to be a replacement for a potentially leaving Pogba next year. I don't know what's what's happening, but I think he's a very good player. He seems like a really good number 10 for Ajax. He's, he's always in the box. I've seen a lot of highlights of him scoring a lot of decent goals and getting a lot of assists. So I'm excited to see him in that Man United squad, definitely. So Van der Beek, I've given him an 83 rated. I don't know what he's going to get, but he got a really good team of the season card last year as well. Uh, but yeah, very excited to see him. And also, pretty decent links there. Obviously, he links to Ake. He links to people like Patrick Van Anholt. Uh, he gets the Dutch links out there. If you get like a Hullet in the squad or something, uh, you can branch off into the Premier League there. Um, you know, he links to other Dutch players, Quincy Promes. He links to Bergwin. Decent. Next up, we've got Timothy Castagna. Very interesting one, if you ask me. Obviously, Leicester just parted with Chilwell and brought in uh, Timothy Castagna from Atalanta. Now, his FIFA 20 card is a left mid. From what a lot of websites were saying, he's a right back. And I think Leicester are going to try and play him as a left back, as a replacement for Chilwell. I'm pretty sure he's right footed. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me what his role is going to be, given that they've already got Ricardo Pereira. Uh, and I think they've got Justin James coming through the squad that they're trying to play a lot as well at right back. So not entirely sure what Leicester's plan is for Timothy Castagna, but obviously he gets a perfect link to Tielemans. He has a strong link to De Bruyne. Could have a decent card next year. Uh, Atalanta obviously made it quite far in the Champions League as well. And I think he had a bit of a part to play in that. So decent uh, signing, I guess, for Leicester. I think it was about £24 million. Pounds. Nothing too crazy. Um, although in the market right now, that's actually quite a lot of money given the fact that I think there's a lot of players like Wijnaldum they've offered like 12 million pounds for. Uh, Thiago Alcantara is going for 30 million euros or something like that. Like prices are pretty low right now. So, you know, we're in a bit of a market crash if you ask me. On the topic of right backs, we have got Doherty from Wolves gone to uh, Spurs. Uh, not the first player Spurs have signed. They've also signed uh, Hoiberg and let go of Walker Peters. This window so far, pretty interesting. Uh, I've not included Hoiberg into this one because I don't think that he will get a one to watch. And if he does, it's going to be like a 76 or 77 rated card. I can't see it being hugely rated. But no, Doherty, I think, is a really good player. Had a good season for Wolves, playing really well as a right wing back. A lot of people are saying he's going to be Tottenham's main right back, but I think you'll be pretty disappointed when you see him play because from what I've seen personally, he's more of an attacking right wing back. He runs up and down the flanking tries to get involved in the attacks a lot um, and I don't think he's going to play mainly as like a Serge Aurier type role unless they're trying to adapt him over the next couple I don't know we'll, we'll have to see um, but he's a decent signing nonetheless uh, for Spurs and he's a decent player I actually do like Doherty a lot I think he's going to be a really decent right wing back in the next couple of years uh, if he gets played in the right position for Spurs I think Jose Mourinho or it's pronounced Jose I think I watched the uh, Spurs documentary I think that he will probably adapt him into a decent player. Uh, I, you know, I've got respect for Mourinho. He's a good manager, and I think that he can definitely play someone like Doherty to his strengths. Next up, we have got Gabriel Magales to uh, Arsenal. Couldn't even remember the name then. Arsenal also signed, uh, I think it's Saliba from uh, the league as well. They've signed two new centre backs, which is very interesting. Um, they are really trying to strengthen their defence. Because before that, they had like David Luiz and Mustafi. Uh, not to say Mustafi, like, I think Mustafi had a pretty decent end of the season, to be fair. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, but Arteta's making some big changes to that Arsenal squad. They've just got Danny Sabayas on another one year loan. I think they were linked with Alwa, which would be a very interesting signing. Um, I think Abamyang's about to sign an extension on this contract as well. So I think Arteta's got a lot. In up his sleeve for that Arsenal squad. This is one that I actually thought United were going to sign. We were heavily linked with Gabriel for a little while, uh, and then Arsenal swooped in and got the transfer done. Um, I would love to see a new centre back at Man United, but we'll have to see who that is. Uh, a good signing for uh, Arsenal as well. It's on the topic of centre backs, obviously, we've got Chelsea who've signed Thiago Silva. I've not included Thiago Silva into this video. Uh, Marlon Sarge just signed for Chelsea, but went back on a one year loan uh, back to Nice. I think it's Nice he came from. Um, so they've signed two new centre-backs as well in their squad. Uh, there's a lot of defenders right now changing hands. You've got Chilwell going to Chelsea, uh, who I've also not included in this video. Uh, you've got, obviously, Walker Peters going to Southampton. Decent signing there. Uh, I think Bellerin was heavily linked with PSG as well. So there's a lot of defenders going here, there and everywhere right now. Another interesting one, we've got Rodrigo to Leeds. I'm not entirely sure what I think about this one. So what, from what I've seen, I think Rodrigo scored like four goals last year in the entire season. I don't know if he was injured. I don't know if that's an actual fact or not. It's from what I've read. Uh, it could be wrong. But Bielsa, I think, is a decent manager for Leeds. And I think he's definitely got a plan for how they're going to play next year. Um, Rodrigo 
fits into that plan supposedly um, I like the links that he brings you know a Spanish striker that's going to be pretty pacey pretty decent on the ball I like that for FIFA 21 I like that for teams uh, I don't think he'll be ridiculously expensive as well which will be decent it'll be a decent start striker for a lot of teams um, but yeah I'll be interested to see what Leeds do next season they've obviously signed Koch and they've signed Rodrigo I think they're linked with a couple more players as well so Given the fact they just trans, uh, sorry, promoted from the championship, they would have got a lot of money from that. They're probably going to spend a bunch of that money on brand new signings. We'll see what comes of it for Leeds. This is a big one for me. Leroy Sane over to Bayern Munich. I've given him a right wing card because he's supposedly been told that he's playing a right wing. He was a right wing for Schalke uh, before Pep tried to make him into a left wing. Unfortunately, I believe he only played one game last year due to injury, which is why I've given him an 85 rate downgrade. Not that I think he deserves it. I think this guy is incredible talent. And I think that in the next five years, he's going to be up there with the likes of Mbappe, with the likes of Serge Nabry. I think those three players, among a few other players, are going to be the the world beaters. You know, De Bruyne's going to be up there for sure. There's going to be some fantastic players at the top level. I think Sane could be one of them if he stays uh, fit and he stays in that buying squad and he performs like I'm expecting him to perform. Um, but yeah, this one I think will definitely be a once to watch for sure. I have no doubt in my mind this will be a once to watch. I want to quickly address one thing as well. Jude Bellingham has been confirmed as a once to watch already by EA. Um, he's not in this video because he didn't have a card for last year, uh, but he is 100% confirmed to be having one. Uh, and we'll see him, obviously, in uh, in FIFA 21 as a wants to watch for Dortmund. Next up is David Silva over to Real Sociedad. Obviously, David Silva's getting on a bit now. He's getting pretty old. He's in his, I think he's in his mid-30s, early 30s. I'm not 100% sure on his age. Um, but EA typically downgrade older players, even if they're fantastic players. Santi Cazorla is a perfect example. Uh, players that typically leave their bigger clubs to join smaller clubs, i.e. Man City to Real Sociedad on a free transfer, EA typically downgrade those players. So I can see David Silva getting a downgrade, uh, getting a big pace downgrade. He shouldn't get massive downgrades in his passing or dribbling, I don't think. Um, but yeah, he transferred to Real Sociedad. I can see EA giving him a once to watch for the simple reason that obviously we're getting free once to watch packs, those that pre-order the game before the 14th of August. Uh, we'll probably get a once to watch SBC. EA like to bring players like this that are pretty high rated, but not exactly usable or not exactly desirable into those kind of packs because it will then make people both excited to pack them because of the rating, but also probably maybe do another pack to try and get something better than that when they see that, oh, I've got an 86, but I could try and get like a, I don't know, a Havertz or a Werner or something. Um, I think that EA will definitely bring a player like that into the ones to watch. Another Arsenal boy here, we've got Willian, who's transferred to Arsenal from Chelsea. I think again on a free transfer. Uh, it was one of those. I'm pretty sure that, I don't know if Chelsea wanted to extend his contract, but his contract was up. Arsenal got him as a free transfer, brought him into the squad, gets a perfect link in a 3-5-2 to that Gabriel Magales or David Luiz. Um, interesting one. I don't know how he perform at Arsenal. Obviously, they've got Pepe and Saka. Both play really well in that right wing spot. So, if Willian's just going to be a squad rotational player for cup games, if he's going to be uh, converted into a left wing, maybe he's going to come into the middle. I don't know what their plan is for Willian, but they signed him nonetheless. So, I, you know, he might get a ones to watch. Um, EA likes to throw in some trolls there. So if we get a big Brazilian ones to watch, he could be a troll for that. I don't know. On to one of the big boys now. I only give him a plus one. He could easily get a plus two or maybe even a plus three. With, this, with the season he had over at uh, Leipzig last year, uh, we have Timo Werner at Chelsea. He transferred, I think he was one of the first transfers. I think Ziyech was the first, and then Werner was the second. And it was before the window even opened. Um, but he, he agreed terms to Chelsea. Uh, I can't remember the exact fee, but it wasn't a huge amount of money. It wasn't like in the hundreds of millions. I think it was like 60 million or something uh, for Werner. But I think it'd be a fantastic signing for Chelsea. He'll probably get a bunch of informs as well. Just know that if you get yourself uh, the ones to watch pack for the pre-order bonus... If Koch gets a, uh, a wants to watch, he's a German CDM, I think, uh, for Leeds. If he gets to wants to watch, he's going to be a massive troll. I can see him getting a wants to watch just to be that troll. But if you see German, it could be Havertz, it could be Werner. They will be incredible at the start of the game for you. That will be probably players that get multiple upgrades as well. I can see him getting a huge wants to watch item by sort of, I don't know, February, March. He could have like an 89, 90, 91. Who knows? Uh, depending on how he performs. But yeah, Werner's definitely going to be a massive wants to watch in the next FIFA. I forgot to mention as well, Werner is confirmed by EA. But one that isn't confirmed, but I think is almost 100% guaranteed to get one, is Ziyech, another Chelsea transfer. Chelsea had a massive window. They've signed so many players. They may even continue to sign more players. Who knows? Uh, Ziyech is one of those players that had a fantastic 
fantastic season at Ajax for the last couple of years. Had a great Champions League run with them as well when they got to the semi-final. Uh, great player. Has already got, I think, an assist or an assist to an assist for uh, for Chelsea. Put in a fantastic ball. Uh, Werner ended up finishing the chance. I saw it against, I think it was Brighton. Uh, looks like a really solid player. Has had some really, really good highlights against some big teams as well. Uh, could get an 87, could get an 86. Uh, I went with 87 because I thought it might be generous with him. I like this guy a lot. I think he's going to have a massive impact for Chelsea. And completing the Chelsea trifecta, it is Kai Havertz. Only confirmed about two or three days ago now, but another phenomenal signing for Chelsea. They've gone all out in this window. Massive, massive signings. They've got Kai Havertz, Ziyech, and of course, Werner. Now, the interesting thing about, a thing about Kai Havertz, he likes to play in that sort of inside forward on the right, so he could easily get like a right forward card or something. I've seen him play there quite a lot for Leverkusen. Um, he could play there for Chelsea as well. He might, what I can see happening, Werner likes to play that sort of left forward role. I can see Frank Lampard starting Werner left forward and Kai Havertz right forward and no out and out striker, but playing them as like a strike duo because Kai Havertz is like 6'3", six, 6'4", six, nearly. He is a really tall guy. I don't know how he'll work necessarily as Cam, but time will tell. I think he'll be a fantastic signing regardless. Definitely will get a ones to watch as well. There's so much hype around this guy. Um, could easily get an even bigger upgrade than that as well. But that concludes the confirmed transfers that I think will get ones to watch items for this video. I'm going to do a part two, I think, if more confirmed transfers come out over the next couple of weeks, which is why I did it a little bit early. Uh, but these are some that are heavily rumoured slash just rumoured. Uh, could happen, could not happen. We've got Bakayoko, who I didn't realise was still a Chelsea player. He's been on loan everywhere. He's gone loan to AS Monaco. He's been on loan to, I think, was it Roma? It's somewhere in the, in the city. Uh, he, he's been on loan everywhere. This guy, he's somehow still a Chelsea player. He just goes on loan every season. Um, heavily linked with AC Milan uh, for a, I think, 3 million euro loan. Plus, I want to say it's like a 20 million euro buyout or something like that. Or, or, or if they enjoy him at the end of the season, they can buy him for that. I'm not entirely sure. We've got uh, Regulon, who has been heavily linked with Man United, apparently offered to Man United from Real Madrid for, I want to say, 20 million euros or 30 million euros uh, would be a good signing, I think, for us. Luke Shaw is a great left back. I really like Luke Shaw, but I think that we need good depth because Brandon Williams, in my opinion, I don't think he's ready to take on that really important role of being that secondary left back that will play a lot of games due to Luke Shaw getting injured every season. Um, so I think Regulon will be a great signing. Uh, Thiago is incredibly heavily linked to Liverpool. Um, I think they're just waiting on the Genie Wijnaldum deal to Barca before they purchase Thiago. But he's been linked to Liverpool for the last sort of two weeks. Uh, advanced talks have happened. Uh, I think that, that is, that's a transfer I think will definitely happen. Will be a phenomenal signing as well. He's had a great season at Bayern Munich. Uh, great Champions League run. Obviously, they won the Champions League and he, was, he, he played a massive role in that Bayern squad. I think it'd be a phenomenal signing for Liverpool. Um, and yeah, he's definitely going to get a good card in FIFA 21 as well. We've got Jaden Sancho, who is one of those. Do I think he'll sign? I don't know. He's been, apparently, United and Dortmund have been in talks for months now about Jaden Sancho. I think Dortmund have set a, a fee of like 108 million euros. I don't think May United want to pay it, but I think May United really do want Sancho. I can see in like a week or so, genuinely I can see United just saying you know what, we'll just pay it. And ended up just paying the, the, the fee and, and overpaying for Sancho and bringing him into the squad. He's a very good player. I think we definitely need it. Uh, I've gone with James Rodriguez for Everton. Could have put Decore in there as well. Both are heavily linked, but I think James will probably get announced over the next couple of days. I want to say that one's almost 100% done. Um, Fabrizio Romano is saying... Uh, he thinks it's almost 100% done as well. So I think he'll probably get announced over the next couple of days. Uh, good signing for Everton. We'll strengthen that midfield. And then we, of course, have Genie Wijnaldum, who I think Barca have offered £12 million for. I want to say that they'll probably end up spend, spending a little bit more for him. I think he's worth a bit more than £12 million. Um, but we'll have to see. Uh, would be a good sign for Barca. Obviously, that perfect link with De Jong as well. But that concludes the video. If you guys have enjoyed, please do like down below. Subscribe if you guys are new around here. Thank you for watching. Let me know down below any transfers you think will get once to watch items in FIFA 21. I'll make a part two of this video in like a week or so uh, if you guys want it. Thank you for watching. See you later.